Mark will equip to door uh, doing a hand forged steel pointed spear and our own shaft. Several ways to do shafts. So I'm going to show you one technique for making the shaft of your spear. We're going to build the spear. We're going to forge it. We're going to actually pound it to shape the way we want it. And then we're going to attach it to a, a shaft. I'm going to take you through every step. So should be uh, should be interesting stuff. But, uh, uh, just got this metal here. We're, this is just pure Osage. This is uh, trees that I cut when I make a bow. This is excess, and it burns really hot. So I chip it up in small chunks like that and put it on there like that and get that fire going around that steel. So right now I'm gonna try and get that steel a little hotter. I'm just, I'm just doing backyard style. I got just a plain pair of vice grips. I got my 1095 cold uh, hot roll. It's just about ready. That's inch and a half. That that steel right there is inch and a half thick. I mean, quarter inch thick by inch and a half wide. steel the way I want it. It's got to be super hot and, and cherry red. All you can get with this cherry. Now I can melt this steel right here probably, but it would take me a lot longer. But nevertheless, I'm going to cut the tips on this to shape the point. That's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm ready to do that now.
You know, wondering, am I making wall hangers here? I'm not making wall hangers. I'm not making wall hangers. You'll see the finished product. These are user spears, state of Florida. It's totally legal to hunt hogs with a spear during the hunting season. As long as you have your hunting license, you can spear all the hogs you want legally. That's the Florida. Alabama, Georgia, and I'm not sure you have to check for your state laws, but uh, down here in Florida, and I know up in Alabama, they definitely, we're good to go here. So it's a tree sand hunt. And you know, you drop it right down in their ribs. You know, it's not a drop, it's a throw, it's a thrust, but it's a drop thrust. But it's, you know, it's a downward from a tree stand down. So it's, uh, it's a great way to hunt, primitive. It's now getting close. We're almost there my forearms give out 61 years old still got a six-pack <laughs> and now I've got it forged and shaped the way I want it I got the rough shape now I got to file it and I don't use I don't use a bench grinder or nothing like that on these I just do it by file you know, it, just, it takes me a while longer, but it's uh, it's efficient. I mean, it works. I just don't like grinding. I don't like you. This bench grinder is really not designed for that kind of work anyway. Tell you what, you run your hand into it right now. And it slice you open. Mm -hmm. That's the camera. Can you camera see this? It started out from this to this. And believe me, this 1095 steel, 1095 is a very expensive. It costs more than just regular steel. How much longer it is. They're exactly the same. They were cut the same. But that's how much they flanged out. Flanged it out probably a half inch on each side. It's getting there. It's got a little ways to go, but I'm getting there with it. Um, next thing will be the shaft. Before we close up shop for the day, Let's, let's look at the shaft. Let's take a look at how I do the shaft and see where all my tools are. Let's go out here. My shaving horse. Ah! My shaft. Huh, that's it. Imagine that. Okay, what you got to understand about this is it's round or it, it's really not round. It's in a circular formation, but it's really not round. And you want to have this thing as round as possible when you cut it all the way down. What we're doing now, this is a cedar tree, and I want to get to the heart of the cedar, which is the finest part of the wood, a wood that is impervious to insects and can lay on the ground for years and not rot. Um, stuff is amazing. It smells really nice when you work with it. And it's very durable and tough, so it makes great shaft for spears, but you gotta pull it out of the heart 
of this. So I gotta get all the sapwood off this right here. And that's basically what I'm gonna start doing right now. What we gotta do is make four corners on this thing. If you if you go at it the same way it's shaped, you're never gonna get it straight. So the only way to get it straight is by cutting a flat side to one top, the one side, making it flat. And then flip it completely 90 degrees and then flatten it again. And then flip it, uh, what would be, 45, okay? And then flatten it again and then flip it to the other side and flatten it. So you make a square with this right here. And then, once you get to, to square, then you've got the ability to get round because you take the corners off of a square and you have a perfect circle. And that's what I'm fixing to start doing right here. One, one side halfway done. Okay. But I got to get to the heart. I got to get, see there's the heart. Squaring it off. We're squaring off so we can get the heart, the very heart. Get up close. Make sure you can see that heart. See that? That's what I want. That 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 pure heart right there. And I got a nice shaft of heart in this wood. I just got to pull it out. I'll tell you what, this kind of work will get you in shape, or it'll kill you. You can see what I've done. I've taken one side. I've taken the other side, and I've taken about a quarter of the top of this other side. So now you see I'm starting to get corners. Now once I establish corners, I can still pull the wood down, keeping the corners. And then the last thing I do is take the corners off and I have me a nice round shaft. Now that's one way of doing it. There's other ways. If you're using a smaller shaft, you can heat bend it. You know, you just put it in the fire, not, not in the fire, but heat it with fire, allow the heat to saturate the wood, and then wherever you've got that heat saturated in that wood, you can bend it, tie it in a knot, just like a pretzel. A wood will actually bend to a, almost a full double uh, if you're careful yeah, and you know how to do it properly. You know, heating wood is the easiest way to manipulate it, just like heating steel. You manipulate steel through heating it. You can also heat, manipulate wood by heating it. where I got this thing like that. I get right up under that sap wood. You see that? See how pretty that is? Mm -hmm. Comes off so nice. square here but I got a four square that's four corners see this four corners the next time you look at this okay all I'm gonna do now is put it in my shaving horse I'm gonna take these corners off corner 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 all four corners and guess what I'll have a perfectly round thing and when I come back the next part of the video will be you'll see the finish round out of the four corners. 
gotten to this point. And now so what I did is I I took what I had, that square, I rounded it, I got this piece, I cut the best section out of the center of it. And now I'm starting to get it the way I want it. It's a little fat yet, but I can always pull that down. That's not a problem. The thing right now is uh, just getting it round. What I like to do is take that. And I'm taking off the high spots. Taking off the high spots and I'm making it as round as I can. Look how pretty that wood comes out when you start taking wood off. Just overnight, you know, just from sitting overnight, it, t it browned up. It's good for now. Thanks for watching. I'm at the uh, final stages, I got to mount. I got to mount the shaft uh, to the spear tip that I built. It will be this. Basically mounted. What I'll do is I'll cut a notch down here with a, a single, just uh, just this right here. I'll cut a notch the same width as the, the base of this spear. And I'll drop this spear down in there about that deep. But I've still got some draw knifing work to do. I gotta, on this end where I'm gonna mount the shaft, I gotta sharpen this whole thing off. Point it, it's gotta be pointed. Can't be blunt like this when you mount it. You gotta sharpen this off like a pencil so that when you mount it, it mounts onto this and it's reduced here. This makes the, the entry wound and then a spear shaft follows because it's very reduced here, okay? So anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Be back here in uh, same time, same station. But uh, thanks for watching. Check back with you later.